All right, welcome to Virtual Coffee Break, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to get your new business partner started. Now, I know most of you, all of you should be familiar with the 15-day quick start, but I had did a video even before we came out with the 15-day quick start that literally was the catalyst to the 15-day quick start. And it really just goes back to basics. So we're going to, now there's a few things that have changed since the recording of this video. So I may stop periodically um, as we go through this video, just to kind of give you some updates on maybe processes or things that I have changed since this video was recorded. But the meat and potatoes are still the same. So I hope you have your notebooks ready. Let's get into this. I was speaking with uh, Director Kamet Turner today about what our topic should be tonight. And we decided we were going to talk about how to get your new business partners started off quickly so that they can make money, okay? Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen. And again, I want you guys to take some notes. And at the end, we're gonna ask questions as well. All right. Can you see my screen? If someone can post in the comments, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go to my virtual office dashboard. And let me be clear again, if you are not a gold builder, meaning you brought in nine people, if you are not a gold builder and you enroll a new business partner, it's your gold builder or upline director that should be onboarding your new business partner. Again, if you bring on a new business partner, you enroll someone new, and you are not a gold builder, I would like for you to pass that on to your gold builder or upline director to onboard your new business partner. Now, why do I say that? We want to make sure your new business partner is getting all of the information. And if you yourself are new, then what are you going to how, what are you going to share with them, right? We don't want them to miss anything. And remember, you have layers of leadership, so you don't have to do everything yourself. So we want to make sure that at least at the gold builder level, you've brought on nine people, you've seen your upline director or gold builder onboard them for you, so we know that they're getting the right information. But don't try to do it yourself, and then now your new person is just as lost as you are. We don't want to do that. We want everyone to be set up for success. Now, with that being said, on your virtual office dashboard, you want to go to right here where it says getting started. And when you click on getting started, you can go right here to the quick reference guide. And this literally tells you the step-by-step -step instructions of what you should be sharing with your new business partner. All the key things you should talk to them about. The game plan interview. What is their why for doing the business, right? We need to know that. Why do we need to know that? How can we help your new business partner get to where they are going if they don't know and they don't tell us where they're trying to go? People get in business to make a profit. Some people join this business because they're trying to replace their full-time income. You need to know if that's why they're getting started. Some people join a business because they just want to um, make money off of their own travel. You need to know that. Some people join the business because they're just wanting to supplement their income. Well, you need to know how much money is supplementing their income to them, right? It could be $500, it could be $5,000. It's your responsibility to know that. And one of the things that you should all do with your new business partners when you're having this conversation with them is writing it down in a book so that you can remind them, hey, you told me that your why is um, 
you wanted to increase your savings. You said you wanted to retire in three to five years when your husband retires, right? You want to have, I have everybody that I personally brought into the business. I know exactly what their why is, what their goals are, how many hours they can commit to the business a week, how much income they want to make monthly. As their sponsor in the, build, in the business, that is my responsibility to know those things. So anyone that you bring in the business, it's your responsibility to know what they want out of the business as well. Because how can you lead them if you don't know where they're going? Does that make sense, everyone? So you want to know what their why is for starting the business. And I usually ask them, what is it that you're looking for this business to do for you that you haven't been able to accomplish up until this point? That's a great way to ask that question, right? Because they may not know, well, why? What do you mean, why? I want to travel more. No, you didn't need this business to travel more, right? If you wanted to travel more, you just would have been traveling, right? People don't travel for two reasons, lack of time or lack of money. So you want to ask the right questions to find out which one is it for them. Could be one, could be the other, could be both. What are your goals? Now, when I talk about goals, I want to know their financial goals. Directly, I ask them, how much income are you looking for this business to make for you? Monthly. I want the monthly amount. Now, some people don't know. Some people can't even tell you how much their monthly expenses are. Why? Because they know it exceeds their income and they'd rather not know. But here's the question that I ask the people. I ask them two questions. And I want you guys to write this down because I'm telling you it works and it really helps people. Um, it really helps set their mind frame to where it needs to be in order to be successful in this business. I ask them this question. If you had one shot in life to have everything you have ever wanted in your life, would you take the shot or would you make excuses? I want you guys to write that down. This is how I ask, what are your goals? If you had one shot in life to have everything you have ever wanted in your life, would you take the shot or would you make excuses? And of course, everyone says, I would take the shot. I would take the shot. And I say, okay. I said, let me ask you another question. If you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? I want to know details. Tell me where would you live? What kind of house would you live in? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? What kind of car would you drive? How would you spend your days? Are there things or people in your family that you'd want to do something for? Are there charities or something that you would want to donate time or money for? I want you to take just two minutes and paint that picture for me of what your life would look like. And what's going to happen is that person, they're going to, you, you can almost see it over the phone, right? They're going to start thinking, oh my gosh, well, I would want to live someplace warm and I want a house. I want a big house. I need at least four bedrooms and four bathrooms because I want people to be able to come visit me. And oh, my dream car, um, I want a Bentley. Oh my gosh, I love the Bentleys. I would love to have a Bentley and, and an Escalade. I want an Escalade too. That would be fun. Um, how would I spend my days? Man, I would travel. I have some family down in Egypt, whatever I want to go visit. Um, I want to donate money to the Lupus Foundation. I would love to donate more time to the church. And, oh, I would buy my mom a house. Like, they're going to start dreaming, and that's what you want them to do. And then after they describe that picture, you say, okay, now I want you to put a price on it. How much income do you need monthly to live that type of lifestyle that you just described to me? And it might take them a minute to come up with something and you might have to, you know, kind of help them a little bit, but you want to remind them in this industry, you can make unlimited income. And I remind them, our company is only three years old and we have 33 families making no less than $8,333 a month. So, how much is it going to cost for you monthly to live the lifestyle that you want to live? Now, what I do next is I paint a realistic picture for them. And let me see if I can pull what I'm trying to pull up here. And some of you have seen this. I have posted it in our Team Lux Platinum group. Favorites. 
right here. So this is our income disclosure statement, but I broke it down to monthly. So if I'm speaking to the person and they say, well, I need $6,000 a month to live the lifestyle that I just described to you, then I let them know, well, I want you to write this down. We have a level in our company called three-star director. A three-star director is someone who has a team of 500 active travel agents. And last year, the average three-star director worked a business 30 hours a week. And on average, they made $7,793 a month. So that kind of gives you an idea of where you need to be, what you need to do in order to create your ideal life, right? And they love that because now they're, they have an understanding, okay, I'm not just going to be in this business doing things aimlessly without a purpose. They know what their goal is and they know exactly what they need to achieve to accomplish it. And that is a big deal. And then I asked them again, how much time can you commit to your business to making $6,000 a month? How much time, right? And they'll, they'll tell you what their time is. And again, I'm referring back to the income disclosure statement here, 30 hours a week is what the average person uh, work their business to make that kind of money. So they can't come at me with, you know, oh, I can do five hours a week. Okay, it's going to take you a long time to make $6,000 a month if you're only working your business five hours a week. To make that type of income, you're looking at a 30-hour-a-week commitment. And then I ask them, are they coachable? And I explain to them what coachable means, what my role is as their coach. My role is to coach, train, and develop you. My role is to stretch you out of your comfort zone into your money zone. My role as your coach is to call a play, right? Just like in the Super Bowl, the coach calls the play, right? But then I also let them know what their responsibility is. Their responsibility in this partnership is to run the play and not make excuses, but make adjustments. Right? And I go into a little more detail. And then at the end, I get the buy-in and I say, do you give me permission to coach, train, and develop you? They say yes. Do you give me permission to stretch you out of your comfort zone into your money zone? They say yes. Do you give me, will you be coachable? Right? And they tell me yes. And now we can move forward because now when I say, I need you to do the online academy, I need you to register for these suppliers. I need you to get registered for convention. I need you to do, right? Now they, they're gonna do it, right? They told me they were coachable. And so now when I call the plays, what are they gonna do? They're gonna run the plays, right? Any questions on that before I move forward? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you have a question about any anything that I just went over. And I'm gonna check the chat here. Hi, Tanisha. Hey, Mahogany, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. So this is got to be my second time attending one of your uh, online classes slash webinars, and I always get an abundant amount of information. <laughs> now, I know some of the stuff that you share on your Team Platinum Lux page. Is this going to be on your page, how you, because um, I'm, I'm finding myself, doing some of these things but not all of them and i want to make sure that i am capturing and i'm using the same methodology that you're using because i really like it and i'm i'm sold again all over again using the words that you're saying um with being coachable and moving from your comfort zone to your money zone like i've never thought about using those terms to make sure that i keep my people or oh, we'll see what they we'll see what their motivation is right first right so yeah, so this um, this training is being recorded, and it does get uploaded on our Team Lux Platinum page in okay. the unit section, and I'll show you since we're right here. Um, just go to the unit section of our Team Lux Platinum page, and then you want to click on the second unit, unit number two, training videos and tips. All of our Team Lux Platinum trainings are here. Um, for those of you that are on YouTube, you can also follow me on my YouTube channel. All the training videos are there as well. Um, and as soon as it pops up, is it going to pop up? There we go. So where's my YouTube channel?
There's just a slight delay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> there we go. This is my YouTube channel. Okay, so those of you know, I updated the name of my YouTube channel and it's now called Lifestyle by Tanisha. Lifestyle by Tanisha. Let's go back to the getting started. So once they, you know, tell me that, yes, they're coachable, I know what their why is, how much time they know. And I also let them know, starting today, you are in training to become a director. <laughs> I let them know that up front. So there, and I tell them, my role is to coach, train, and develop you so that Ooh. My people. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> sorry, y'all. And I tell them, my role is to coach, train, and develop you so that you can lead a team of at least 500 people, 300 people, whatever that director level is for them. So now they have a perception of, wow, I'm in training for like a management position, you know, a, a, a leader, not a management, but a leadership role. And so now they don't, it changes their perception where they're not expecting you to hold their hand and spoon feed them. You guys know what I'm saying? Set that expectation of I'm training you to be a leader of a team of 500 people. Let them know. And then I'm telling you, it just changed their whole perception because they thought they were just signing up for this little travel business and they were going to be just booking cruises and, you know, maybe telling a few people. But now you painted this picture like, oh, no, no, no. We're about to change your life. You want $6,000 a month? This is serious work here, okay? So that's the type of conversation that I have with new business partners. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is, I walk them through all four of the emails. Some of you are not doing that. And so these new business partners, they're getting these emails, they have commissions and they've never set up their Paylution account. Walk them through the emails, have them pull it up. A couple of things that I make them do with the email. I walk them through the Paylution, right? They need their user ID in order to activate their Paylution account, right? Paylution is where they set up their direct deposits for their Planet Marketing Commissions. They don't know what a user ID is, right? So you have to say, I need you to pull up your Planet Marketing email and in there is your user ID. Make a note of that. Now go to your Paylution account and when you click activate, it's gonna ask for the user ID. This is the number they're referring to. As leaders, you need to show your people what to do, not tell them what to do. I'm gonna repeat that. As leaders, your role is to show people what to do, not tell them what to do. And it starts with the sign up process. Don't just send people your link and tell them to sign up, walk them through it. You're asking for their partnership. You're telling them you're gonna help them. You're telling them they're in business for themselves, but not by themselves, but then you just send them the link and let them figure it out. That's not, that's not what a leader does. So have them set up their Paylution account, and then I tell them to go to their Planet Marketing account. And I tell them what they need to make notes of, right? Make a note of your user ID. Make a note of, I tell them to actually create a link in, not a link, but a contact in their phone for Planet Marketing. I tell them, pull out your phone, add a new contact, Planet Marketing. I want you to put their, their email in there, their phone number, your user ID, your replicated website link. Anytime you contact Planet Marketing, they want to know what your user ID is. So make a note of that, right? Then I do the same thing with IntelliTravel. I'm like, pull up your your IntelliTravel emails. You should have gotten two emails from IntelliTravel. One has your agent ID and your, um, the, like the training manual link. And the other one has all this contact information, your ARC number, your CLIA number. And I tell them, make a note of that because you're gonna need it. Create a contact in your phone for IntelliTravel with your agent PIN, your ARC number. Those are your credentials for booking travel. Your CLIA number, those are your credentials for booking cruises. Let them know exactly what all that information is. Tell them you need to put um, IntelliTravel's phone number and their mailing address because when you register for the suppliers, you're gonna need that information. And then I even take it a step further. I'll let them know. When you contact a cruise line or someone to book travel, they may say, they may say what's your agency ID? They're referring to that ARC number. 
So make sure you have that handy. Or they may ask for your agency phone number. They're not looking for your phone number. They're looking for IntelliTravel's phone number. So make sure you have that 561 number in there. Explain that to them. Guys, if you take the time to give all of this information to your new business partner up front, that's less time that you have to give them later, right? You're trying to make them independent of you as quick as possible. We're trying to create leaders, develop leaders. So you have to give them all the information that they need so that then they can duplicate that with their team. It's worth it, I promise you, right? Then I take them to their Intel, I'm like, okay, now I need you to log into your IntelliTravel office. And I make them log in. And then I take them to the profile to change their password. You know they're not gonna remember that crazy temporary password. And that's just what it is, a temporary password that IntelliTravel gave them. You know, help your business partners out and help them by showing them, walking them through how to change their password. So we go here, we click on my agency, we go to my profile and boom, edit contact information. And here's where they can change their um, password, right? I show them how to do that. Then I'm gonna walk them to, I say, Yay. okay, now I'm gonna start to give you, uh, we're gonna set up your personalized agent website. And I go there with them, walk them through it. I tell them, don't put anything here, right? Upload the picture, submit, takes 48 hours. I say, okay, now go back to your dashboard. Now I'm gonna give you your actual homework assignments, right? I want you to print the agent training manual. Do you see it? Yep, click on it. I don't just say, I need you to read the agent training manual. I want them to actually click on it, open it up so they can see what it is, what it looks like, right? Then I say, okay, so homework, Assignment number one is to read the agent training manual. And I make them write it down, say, so write that down. And then I say, okay, scroll down a little further. You see where it says top agent challenge? They're like, yeah, I see that. I'm like, under there, there's three boxes. You see those three boxes? They say, yeah, I see it. I say, okay, what does the first box say? I don't tell them what the first box says. I want them to tell me, because I want to make sure that they're picking up what I'm putting down, right? I want to make sure they see it. And I say, okay, click on it. And then they click on it. And I say, what does it say? And they say supplier registrations, right? I tell them about the shared logins. Don't change these. I let the new business partner know that in this business, you're going to have a lot of usernames and passwords. So you need some type of system to track them all. Whatever system you use, add these four to it, right? And then I tell them on the bottom, each box tells you step by step how to register with these suppliers. So over the next few weeks or however long it takes you, just start to get registered with these. All right, and I explained the simple registration as well. I don't just tell them what to do. I'm showing them what to do. And I say, okay, that was your second homework assignment. What does the second orange box say? Come and take a tour, right? Click on that. And I tell them, you're gonna come up to a YouTube video that's two and a half hours long. It's gonna take you step by step through every single tab link in your um, IntelliTravel back office so that you know how to navigate. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, and now the third orange box, what does that say? Are you marketing compliant? Okay, click on that. Now that should take you to another YouTube video. So now we're in 23 minutes. It's gonna tell you what you can and cannot do as far as marketing your business. And I also explained to them how important compliance is. As a leader of someone who's gonna be a director, you need to know what your team can and cannot do so that you can police and protect so no one gets in trouble. That's important, right? So I let them know that. My last homework assignment for them is I take them to the education tab and Teletravel University. Now, keep in mind, this video was recorded in 2019. And so the IntelliTravel site looks a little bit different. The basics are all still there, but um, it has been upgraded a lot since this video. I am very thorough when I do my onboarding. I explain to them that the university has three levels. I explain to them what each of these are, right? I 
I have them click on upcoming events and I say, let's find the next dream maker that's closest to you. And I tell them, click on April and go down to April 27th. Where's that dream maker at? I make them tell me it's in Cleveland, Ohio. Because again, I want to ensure they're following what I'm saying. And I'm like, okay, is that one too far for you? Okay, scroll down a little further. What's the next one that you see? And they'll say, oh, I see one May 11th. Okay, where's that one at? Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, perfect. That's right there in your city. Okay, you see where it says click, tick, you know, to purchase, click, click on that. And I make them pull it up. Okay, click on where it says buy ticket. And I make them pull it up. And I say, where is it taking place at? Uh, Double Tree, Baltimore. Exactly. Okay, you see it says wait list. I need you to get on the wait list because it's about to be sold out. It is sold out, but get on the wait list. There's a chance someone will drop out. Right, so guys, walk them through it. We want them to know what they're doing so that they can tell their new business partner. Any questions on this part so far? Please unmute yourself if you have a question. I have a question. So when All we're right. doing this and we're taking- So then I take them the back to the oh. university after I explain. What was your question? When we're doing this and we're taking them through the back office, is that our, um, this is after the welcome call, but this is like the two hours over the couple of weeks that we spend with them going over everything in the beginning. Right. But as I said in the okay. beginning of the video, I'm not sure when you came in, this is what the gold builder and above should be doing. So if you are not a gold builder, then you need to hand your new business partner off to your gold builder or your um, immediate upline director. Yeah, new for, business for partners, right? New business partners should not be doing the onboarding until they've been trained on how to do the onboarding. This way, they don't miss anything, and this way, you don't set your new business partner up for failure. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The three things. The other thing. Um, I explain, especially about this one, is that they get an email every week letting them know about the webinars and that they have to register through the email. Important to know. Then I tell them to scroll down and I tell them about the online academy. I let them know if they do it from start to finish, it takes them two hours. The videos are only like two to five minutes long each, but once they complete this, they're gonna know exactly you know, how to start booking travel. And I also let them know about this. Some people are having issues with these videos playing because they're on Internet Explorer. So I let them know if the videos aren't playing correctly, you know, download Firefox. I let them know that up front so they know what to expect. Now, one of the things that I love to do, if your new business partner is excited about their business, they're not going anywhere. So I say, well, before we go, no, first I tell them, I say, okay, those are all your homework assignments. Do you have any questions about them? You, you know where to find everything? They're like, nope, nope, I got it. I was like, okay, before I let you go, I want to share with you one more thing that is fun. You ready? They're like, yep. I'm like, I want you to click on my agency and agent only fans. And I explain to them what fam trips are, right? These educational trips where you get to learn, what the vendors have to offer and you get to go to all these cool places and you know i'll break down one of these right i'm like look at these carnival cruises i go down to the carnival cruise you live in texas right jashana well look at this there's a seven day western caribbean cruise leaving out of galveston and it's only 463 dollars and they're like what mm -hmm. for seven days yep and now that you're a travel business owner you can go on that. And they're like, wow, that's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, scroll down a little bit more. You see that one eight days in Costa Rica for just $9.99? They're like, oh my gosh. And I let them know. There's a fly in here and it's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I let them know. I say the first paragraph is going to tell you about the itinerary and all the places you can go. I said, but that second paragraph is going to break down the price right? And it's per person. It's usually based on double occupancy. So I let them know. 
And here's where I get them. I let them know that a lot of times these trips are based on double occupancy. So whoever your best friend is or your spouse, whatever, you want to get them in a business so you have a travel buddy, right? I go through all that with them. By the time they get off the phone with me, I promise you they're probably still on this page looking at all these cool trips. I also let them know about FAM Travel for Me, that newsletter that's dedicated to just FAM trips. And now they are excited. And guess what they're going to do as soon as they get off the phone? They are going to want to start all their training so they can, you know, get involved with these trips. But guys, that is how you how you get your business partners to be excited. If they are excited about their business and they see that they are supported, they're not gonna just be left out there to figure it out, they will stick and stay. They will stick and stay. Now, any questions on that before I move to the next thing? I'm gonna go to the chat section. What was that website, Fam Travel For Me? I think I, I don't know if I have that. Yes, yeah, so Fam Travel For Me, hold on, I gotta, in my way is a newsletter that you can subscribe to for $25 for the year or a group of you 10 of you can get together kicking $100 and then all of you can use the same thing but what's cool about this newsletter and I was just looking at this the other day let me show you guys something so you could pick up whatever you want I was looking at Vegas the other day. Caesars Entertainment lowered their rate. What? You can stay at the Flamingo for $18 per night. You can stay at Caesars Palace for $55 per night. The Paris Hotel, $30 per night. So any place you want to go, you can just click on the destination, and it's going to tell you about all these fam trips. It's going to tell you how to access the travel agent rates. Let's look at this. Buy a resorts for as low as $99 per night. I mean, anything you want to do. You want to go to Cuba, you click on Cuba, and it'll tell you about fam trips or travel agent info, whatever you want to know. So I let them know about this as well. How many? So update. Now when I'm discussing these travel agent rates, I'm also, and this is part of the 15-day quick start, telling them about the CLIA card. Because if they don't have their CLIA card, then they're not going to get access to the travel agent rates. So that's why that is um, in the 15-day quick start. We talk about the CLIA card. You did not know about FAM Travel for Me. <laughs> I'm looking in the comments. So Mildred said, how long should they complete these first steps of signing up? and looking at the videos compliance video. So great question. So Mildred wants to know, how long do you give them to complete all of this? So here's what I tell them. Based on, and, and this is important to say, I'm glad you brought that up, Mildred, but this is important to communicate to your new business partner. Based on the amount of time that they say they can work their hours per week, I'm just telling them what they should do during that time so however long if they only can work their business an hour a day then every hour a day they need to just start knocking down these tasks and getting them done so there's no time frame the other thing i let them know based on what their goals are so if someone comes into business and they tell me they want to make six thousand dollars a month i let them know up front it's going to take you years before you start making a lot of money booking travel, unless you're focusing on cruises and groups. It's not something that you're gonna make right away. That's that later money. Good night, good night, mommy. Okay. Um, I let them know, that's that later money because you might book a group cruise tonight and you make, you know, it's a $2,000 commission, but if the cruise doesn't take sale until August, you're not gonna see that money till like November. So, this is the side of the business that you're going to learn and grow over time. But this is not where we're going to put our main focus because you told me you wanted to make $6,000 a month. So I'm going to show you how we're going to get that money and to help you pay your bills weekly while you're still over here building your travel business. So there's no set time. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mildred? 
Got it. Okay, perfect. All right. I think Jashana just got really, really excited <laughs> when she saw all of those uh, travel agent rates. <laughs> all right. So now we talk about the marketing side. So here's where I have a conversation with the new business partners about the, um, the marketing side. So this might be the first onboarding and then I get them on my calendar maybe, I don't know, in the next day or two to go over the marketing side. Sometimes I have this conversation all in one sitting. I've been doing it all in one sitting lately and let me show, tell you why. I found that when you give your new business partner all of this information, they get so engrossed in the travel side of the business that they never work the marketing side. It's all about the travel, 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 travel. And the problem with that is, and, and before I move forward, do any, have any of you experienced what I'm saying right now? You do the orientation on the travel side of the business, and then your new business partner, they just get so engulfed in the travel side that they absolutely do nothing on the marketing side. How many of you have experienced that? Anybody? I'm, I'm looking in a chat. Kia said yes. Noja said yes. Angel said me. Tamikia, yes. Janine, okay. <laughs> Someone said they ordered the black cards and they don't know what they're for. Okay. Tanya said I have yes. Okay. So I'm going to share with you guys what I do to now get the new business partners up and running immediately. Okay. Okay. So remember, this was before the 15 day quick start. And this is how the 15 day quick start came about because so many business partners were getting started with their training on the travel side. Then they never really got up and going on the marketing side. And then because the travel commissions come in slowly, they would end up canceling their business because now they're looking at that $60 as a bill. So that's how, why you will see with the 15 day quick start, we now start with the marketing side of the business and then the travel side. Any questions on that before I keep moving forward? Everybody good? All right, let's keep it moving. It starts with having the conversation with them about the first three seats, the million dollar seats. Clear all the drawings. Okay, so here's what I say to them. This is my conversation with them. And again, this could be at the same, during the same conversation that you're doing the IntelliTravel onboarding. I let them know all that stuff I just gave you, there's no deadlines, take as much time you need. Again, that side of the business, you're going to, you know, build over time. You understand that? And they say, yes, I got it. I understand. I said, but right now, we're going to focus on the marketing side because you told me you need to make $6,000 a month, right? And we're trying to get the five-star, right? You're going to be coachable. Yep. Okay. Let me explain to you about, you have $3 million seats. The $3 million seats are going to go to the first three people that you enroll in the business that become your business partners. You only get three. And so we want to do our best to get the right three people in those seats. Now, let me explain to you what those million dollar seats mean. What they are, are positions of equity. And the first three people that partner with you, they're going to be in a position to really become flat out wealthy. And let me give you an example. Let's say a few years from now, you have 30,000 people in your organization. Well, 10,000 of those people are going to fall into the matrix of person number one. 10,000 are going to fall into the matrix of person number two and 10,000 are going to fall into the matrix of person number three. And those three people are going to have access to make $4 per person. So that's $40,000 a month in residual income that they could be making if they're a builder, if they're a builder. And if they make 40,000, a month, you override that, you get a 10% override. So now that's 4,000 that comes to you. Now, 
let me explain what that really looks like. And then I tell them this story about what happened to me. And you guys can share this story as well, because this will help you really, really understand those million dollar seats. So here's the story. I tell them the, my million, my first million dollar seat was claimed by my dad. He joined the business. My dad, once he figured out it was network marketing, didn't want anything to do with it because he didn't understand it. And so then my dad quit the marketing side of the business, but he kept the travel side. Six months later, I looked in my back office and saw my dad had 71 people in his matrix. And I'm like, how did he get 71 people? He hasn't signed up anybody. And then I realized, oh, that spillover from me. People that I was enrolling in the business spilled over into his matrix, which meant had my dad been building, that would have been $284 a month in residual income that my dad could have been receiving had he been a builder. And they're like, oh, I said, but wait, seat number two was taken by a good friend of mine named Stephanie. Well, Stephanie, did the business for like a year and quit. And guess what? People I enrolled into the business spilled over into her matrix. And right now, Stephanie has about $400 a month sitting in her matrix that just goes right back to Planet Marketing. It doesn't get paid out to anybody. And I don't get 10% of the 400 because she's not active. I said, and then person number three that took my million dollar seat, my best friend, Camette, who has over 700 people in her organization, she getting paid and I get a 10% override on her matrix. And they're like, okay, okay. So I say, now listen, here's what I want you to, to think about. If you had a million dollar company and you had to, um, you had to assign someone president, vice president and CEO, who would those three people be? You're looking for sharp, ambitious, driven, professional, someone who is money motivated, someone who operates with integrity, someone who is not comfortable working at a job. They want more out of life. Who would those three people be? And then they start thinking, they're like, hmm, hmm. Well, maybe my cousin, I'm like, okay, tell me about your cousin. Why do you think your cousin deserves one of your million dollar seats? Tell me about him. And then they start describing them to me. I'm like, okay, write their name down, write their name down. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, what about who's number two? And they start thinking, right? They start thinking. And then they're, you know, I have them write it down. And then number three, who, who's your third person? And then they'll come up with someone. I said, okay, now we got our three people, but I want you to come up with three more just in case those three people are not interested. And I make them come up with a total of six. Now, Here's what I did. Okay, so now I have them come up with a list of their top 10. So here's where I changed or upgraded from this. I had the new business partners come up with their list of their top 10. And those are the people that I have them invite to their business launch. And so the goal is out of the top 10 that we fill their million dollar seats with those sharp, ambitious professionals. Okay, any questions on that? No questions? Okay. I then take them, I send them the Just Ask Peak Interest script. I send them the Just Ask Peak Interest script and I go over with go ugh, I go over it with them. I make them read it to me step by step, right? And I say to them, I say, okay, do you have people on Facebook you're friends with, but you don't really know them, know them? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I got some people like that. I say, okay, I want you to imagine you and I are on Facebook. We're Facebook friends, but we don't really know each other. Read the first part of the script to me and they read it to me. And then I say, okay, based on what you just sent me, yeah, I'm interested, what's the next part? And then I make them read it. And I say, yeah, I can watch it right now. 
And then I say, okay, now what's the next part? Using the mobile app, that it is, right? So I make them, we have this whole conversation. We go through the script. Here's where you get them moving right away, guys. Okay? I tell them, I say, okay. The three people you mentioned, the six people you mentioned, you know them personally, right? So it would be weird to say, I know we don't really know each other. I want you to edit that out, take that part out. But I want you to now take the rest of it and I want you to text it to them right now, to those six people. So now keep in mind the Jappy script has been updated. So this is looking a little different right now. So I'm going to just kind of go past this a little bit. But the whole point that I was trying to make in this section is I'm actually having the new business partner invite uh, people while I'm on the phone with them. So I'm not just telling them to go do it. I'm saying, okay, send this message to this person. And then they're sending the message, they're getting a response, and then I'm showing them exactly how to respond to the message. Because if you don't help, if you don't, go through the inviting process with your new business partner, you're just telling them to go invite, they won't do it because they don't know what to say. They don't know how to respond or they'll just post up a flyer and think that that's inviting. So you want to, these scripts kind of help. You don't have to use these scripts, by the way, but they, the scripts, the Jappy script just kind of helps them to get an idea of what to say. And then they just need to take the scripts and make it their own. Anybody have any questions about that? No? So, excuse me. Um, I like what I heard so far, mm -hmm. but... Um, for the script, do you give it to um, individuals? Like you, you would text it to them, message, message them, and then have them. But you don't, it's not word for word. It's kind of. The own. new business partner has the script, but they need to personalize it for who they're going to send it to. Okay. And based on their relationship with them, because you don't want it to be spammy. Again, the script is just to kind of help new business partners get an idea of what to say, what the flow of the conversation should be. But you don't want to just kind of like just copy and paste and send it as is, right? When it comes to um, uh, uh, inviting, when you're inviting, especially to a business launch, you're not sending messages. You have to pick up the phone and call people. So that is part of this too, having them call because then people also get too comfortable with sending messages and now they don't feel comfortable having conversations with people. So you have to, when they identify, like for example, you help them identify their top 10 people to invite to their business launch. Well, then you want to give them the wording to say and you want to have them call the first person on the list. You're still on the phone with them, but you want to have them call the first person on the list and kind of walk them through what to say to them, to invite them to their business launch. So you're doing it with them. The scripts are going to be more for your cold market than for your warm market. Does that make sense, Rochelle? It does. I mean, I never used it. I just thought maybe we can um, kind of do our, you know, like you were saying before, our own your own what? Um, way of talking to people. Yeah, yeah. If if you if your new business partner, you know they're they're savvy. They know how to invite or whatever. That's fine. But I don't want everyone to assume that their new business partner is gonna know how to invite. They typically don't come into the business as a master inviter. Mm -hmm. So this just kind of helps you. Um, Again, and this is this video was back in 2019, right? We, we've changed and upgraded a lot of things. That's why I'm kind of fast forwarding this because, you know, you, you learn, right? And then you create best practices and your techniques evolve as you personally develop. See, mm -hmm. and Tamika, here's the thing. Just like my person, because it was so... I found out about this stuff through trial and error. And you know how they, that old saying, when you know better, you do better. 
And I believe if I knew back then what I know now, and I could have communicated the whole million dollar seed and how it all worked a little better to those people, then they wouldn't have fallen off. And so that's why I really wanted to take the time tonight to share it with all of you so that you understand it. Because if you understand it, then now you can have that conversation with your new people. All right. So Trisha Ash is asking, are these scripts available to us on the team page? Absolutely. So let's go to the team page. If you go to team Lux, actually it's right in the announcements. I believe I pinned it as an announcement. Excuse me, um, Director. I think Josephine has her hand raised. Speak interest script. Josephine? Hey, Director Burke. Just one quick question. Back to the matrix. Mm -hmm. um, what if you do have someone, um, she was your third person that came on to your, um, to your downline, but she's only on the rep side. Is she also counted as being in your matrix? That spot is taken up in the matrix because they are a rep. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Good to but know. Cause, and, that, and that person is no longer on my, well, she, her account has been canceled. Yeah. Um, so now that's a okay. dead spot in your matrix. Okay. Can someone else fill that spot or no? Nope. Nope, the computer, the next person you enroll, the computer is going to look for the next open spot in your matrix, and that's where mm -hmm. they will fall. Okay, great. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. You're welcome. Very good information. Very good information. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else You're have any welcome. questions? No, thank you, though. Okay, good. Another thing, guys, please take the time to walk your new business partner through our team Lux Platinum group. Tell them about the unit section and all the training that's there and the announcements. Make sure they know the importance of staying plugged in. All right, let me go back to the chat. So Dolores says she did that last night and got a potential prospect for ICA. Excellent, Dolores. <laughs> so Mildred is asking me, so your dad quit the marketing side, but stayed active with the travel. All right. I'm going to skip past that. More than 60 days, they lose their spot in the matrix. I call it matrix suicide. If you don't pay your 1995 to planet marketing for two months in a row, you lose your spot in the matrix. And if you re-enroll, you get a spot in the matrix, but it's at the bottom. You don't get that same spot. There are people who have lost their entire team because they let their planet marketing side lapse and they lost the money. That's another conversation that I have with the new business partner. I let them know about that too. I said, there are people who have lost thousands of dollars in residual income because they weren't paying attention to their business credit card expired, they didn't, you know, they updated the travel side, didn't update the marketing side and lost thousands of dollars and their spot in the matrix. You don't want to do that. So now they have in their mind, I don't know about anything else, but I'm going to make sure I don't ever lose my spot in the matrix. Got to communicate that to them. <laughs> Tanya said, she feels like she was just onboarded. <laughs> That's good, Tanya. All right, let's see. George said, it may seem like a lot at first. However, as you dedicate time each day to doing it, it becomes learning fun and a good habit. Absolutely, absolutely. 
All right, what questions do you have? I want to have some dialogue. What kind of questions do you have, concerns? Go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, so let's go here for the last five minutes. What questions do you all have and did you find this helpful? Yes, extremely helpful. Um, the one question that I do have, and I don't know if you've done a training over this or not, is when, when you're prospecting people and getting to know them, I know relationships is a big part of it. And I'm only saying this because I've run into this. Mm -hmm. How do you figure out which are the people that are going to stick and stay or and which ones are the ones that are going to are basically going to do you don't. The suicide? You can't. Yeah. yeah, you you can't determine that. Your <clears throat> goal is just to find out if they're open to looking at ways to earn additional income and if they are, share the information with them. What they're going to okay. do, they're going to do. Because it's always the people you think are going to stick and stay don't. Yes. The people you think won't do the business will. So we can't, we, we don't want to make decisions for grown adults. Let them make their own decisions. We just want to share the information with them and let them decide what they want to do. But that's okay. why that's why when it comes to the million dollar seats, that's why I say just invite, have them invite their top 10. After we get the million dollar seats, then whoever comes in, they come in, whoever leaves, they leave. You're always, always, always going to have people who join the business and quit. That's never going to stop. I promise you, Mr. Bradley has people he enrolled in the business and end up quitting. It's never going to change. And he's a multimillionaire. These are adults. Things happen. Life happens. Not everybody who enrolls in the business is going to stick and stay. Even if you do everything correctly. Because you're dealing with people and they have to do what's best for them. Does that make sense, Susan? Yes. No, okay. it does. Good, good. Anybody else? I just wanted to thank you, Director Burke. I was in the doctor's office. I really wanted to thank you for recording this so that um, I can actually go back and watch the whole thing. So ah, thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? I think it was really helpful. Um, the only thing that I had was not um, reviewing in complete detail was, you know, the back office because I knew that they had uploaded up they had updated the online academy with it going through it much more thoroughly mm -hmm. so now what i do i just touch on some of the hot points mm -hmm. um but i also asked them was there anything within their back office that wasn't clear of course you know, with the age with the um you know, customizing their uh site and the whole nine yards mm -hmm. so should i circle back i mean not circle back but should i actually go back and put that back in with the back office uh, well, or the back office or what yeah, I would just say you want to show them or have them go to the areas of where the homework assignments are. At least that. I don't go through the entire back office because you're right. There's a video, come and take a tour, does all of that. But I'm giving them specific homework assignments like, uh, you know, read the training manual. So I want to make sure that they go to the training manual, they know how to get it, and they know that that's part of their homework assignment. Right, so it's those homework assignments that I make them find on their own so that they know how to find it. And then, you know, they can watch to come and take a tour to discover everything else. And this is one of the reasons why, like I love using Zoom for one-on-one -on -one coachings, but I typically avoid using Zooms for the onboarding for this kind of stuff because I find, and you guys can tell me if you find this too, I find that the new business partner is so focused looking at my screen and me clicking around that then when they're by themselves, they don't know how to find it. Now, that's one thing I do do differently. We do it via Zoom, but I have them pull up their screen. I just get have them share their screen. Okay, that's so good. They're, yeah, so they're doing it on their own and I can guide them through it. Okay, then that's smart. There you go. So you can still do Zoom, but have them share their screen. That's good. That's a good uh, workaround. Shamika? I was going to say one tip that I did um, kind of put in there too is putting emphasis on a knowledge um, knowledge base um, in Intelli Travel. 
that's been helping me because before um before I wasn't using the 15 day quick start, but then you'll have people reaching out to you asking you stuff about in Seller Travel website. And it's like, you know, use your knowledge base. So um definitely putting emphasis on that knowledge base. And so just they I know that they understand that say, okay, well, if I know if I have any IntelliTribal questions, I ask them. And then if I can't find the answer, then I'll reach out to you. I'm like, you got it. And yeah. I did want to ask so a clarification. So um, in the event, we do have those three seats filled and say mm -hmm. one person is like, hey, I really don't want to, I think I'm about to counsel. We can fill out their paperwork so we can replace them with someone else, right? If they are open to transferring that spot, their spot to someone else, you yes, they have to fill it out. You can't do it. They have to fill it out and then the person receiving it has to fill it out. And they have to be active and in good standing for that to happen. Um, but it, it's kind of rare that that happens, but yeah, yeah. And then when it comes to the knowledge base, now when I'm talking to people about um, registering, registering for the travel suppliers, that's where I bring up the knowledge base because now the knowledge base is updated with uh, requesting registration with the suppliers. So I show them how to go there and pick certain suppliers and then they can request that and Teletravel registers them with those suppliers. Stormy? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. It's saying my speaker's bad. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that I found, it, it just always seems to be uh, my business partners always have a IntelliTravel question at the most inopportune times. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh. So what I've done, and Director Burks, you could you know, tell me if maybe this wasn't a good idea. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is I, I always ask all of my personally sponsored business partners to go on WhatsApp and I will make short little videos of myself doing something with my travel office. So when they ask me, I could just shoot that to them real quick on the WhatsApp because the WhatsApp doesn't limit the amount of time you can make a video. So it'll be just long enough to go into IntelliTravel, hit either knowledge base or the help desk, or show them where the tutorials are, as opposed to getting on with them directly, because usually they don't want to talk to me directly. They, you know, just want to know, you know, oh, I need to partner with this person. How do I do that again? So I just you know, recorded myself doing it and I just keep it in a little folder in my phone and I send it to them WhatsApp and then I get, okay, thanks, great, got it. Does that make sense or no? Does that sound too impersonal? Well, I, here's the thing. you When it comes to the travel side of the business, especially if you are not an ambassador, you want to make these people independent of you as fast as possible. So if you take the time during the onboarding to show them all the resources, right? I show them the official IntelliTravel Departure Lounge group and tell them that is your, your, your Google for IntelliTravel. If you have a question about travel, don't ask me. Go in the group and search it because they probably have talked that topic to death. You're going to find, you know, eight, nine posts on that one topic. I'm not a big booker, so I'm not going to have the answers that they have. Usually, what the as a leader, when someone asks you a question, especially about the travel side, your response should be, what resources have you checked? Because you don't want to be their first attempt at finding an answer. You should be their last attempt at finding the answer. They should have already searched the website. They should have already searched the departure lounge group. Maybe they should uh, you know, have used the online chat or something like that. You shouldn't be their first go-to. And if you initiate that, 
That's what they're going to expect. And that's how you end up in the management trap. They are the CEOs of their business. And if you took the time to do the onboarding with them and spent that time in the beginning, they should already have the answer to most of the stuff. Now, have I had people come to me and ask me, and if you all have to go, I understand we're going over time, um, but have I had people who come to me with travel stuff? Yes, but they were able to tell me what they checked. I checked this, I did this, and I'm still a little confused. Which way should I go? And then I'm able to give them the information. But something like a travel supplier registration, I tell them during the onboarding, if you have trouble registering with the supplier, you need to contact IntelliTravel. I can't help you with that. That's between IntelliTravel and the supplier. I can't help you with that. So they don't come to me with that. So you want to establish that in the beginning. Does that make sense, Stormy? But if you got those little videos, I mean, that's fine, but I just feel like you're, you're doing more work than necessary and you're creating an environment where you're their go-to person and that's not the way it should be. Felicia? I have two questions. Okay. Um, sorry. So my one question is I'm, you know, focusing on couples. Mm -hmm. So the first question is I, I definitely understand there's only one matrix per household, correct? Yes. Yes. And so A married couple can only have one planet marketing account together, but each spouse can have their own ITA. And then what is a oh, what is something I could say as an objection of why should we pay for both? So if a couple says, well, why pay for both? Let's just, you know, have my wife just do it. And we just work together on that. As far as the ITA? Yeah. Right. So I explained to them, number one, when it comes to fam trips, um, a lot of times, some of them, well, the IntelliTrips, let me say the IntelliTrips, and even some fam trips, they're agent only. So only if, and then I give the example of like in the big picture video, that trip to Jamaica for $99 was agent only. So if you did not own an ITA in your name, then you could not go on that trip. So if the husband and the wife have their own ITA, now they can both go on the trip. That's number one. Um, number two, commissions. So if the wife signs up, uh and she books travel, she earns 70% of the commission. But then now let's say the wife is a gold builder. She books travel, she gets 70% of the commission. But if the wife sells the husband, the ITA, and the wife is a gold builder, and now they book all the travel through the husband's ITA, his ITA will make 70% of the commission and the wife will earn a 10% override. So now that's 80% of the commission coming into their household and she's not even a travel genius. So just wait, when she becomes a travel genius, now that's 90% coming into her household, right? Because any travel she books, yeah. she's going to get the 80%. And then any travel book through his ITA, she's going to get the override. Got it. So that's, that's the main reason. And then, of course, there was back when we were getting our Marriott, you know, discounts. Um, you know, Marriott only allowed you to stay at one property for the year at the fantastic rate. So if you really, really, really love the property... Um, you know, if the spouses sign up together, the spouse could book it one time during the year and the other spouse could book it during the other time of the year. Um, so, but those, those are the benefits. Those are the benefits. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. The last question. So if, if I have the husband and wife there and they both have the ITA, do I get the $4? Yes, for each ITA. If the, hus if, if the husband does not have a planet? Do I still get yes. four dollars? Yes. Okay. Every time they pay okay. thirty nine ninety five, that's when the four dollars is made. Gotcha. No, even if they don't have a, if they're not active on their planet side, so the, the four ninety five isn't the four dollars is not coming from planet. 
Yeah. You have to have planet and be active in order to make it. But for right. them, you are making four dollars whenever someone pays their thirty nine ninety five. Period. The four dollars has nothing to do with whether or not they are a planet marketing rep. The four dollars is tied to the ITA. And if they pay $39.95 monthly to keep the ITA, $4 of that $39.95 goes to you. Yes. So you just want to make Sounds sure good. you are the planet marketing rep that's active. Yeah. And with, I'm sorry, I got it. <laughs> because cause now that you say that, because you're like, okay, well, you could have the husband, I mean, the wife can sign up the husband and then the husband. But, I don't know. Would it be shady if I wanted to sign up both of them and have the four dollars come to me for both? You can, but you you want to inform them of the best way for them to have more money come into their household. Because then, if they find out down the road that they could have done it that way, oh, I could have signed him up under me, but instead you sign each of us up. Then they're gonna be looking at you side eye, like, why didn't you just tell me yeah. I could sign up my husband? And now that would have got me closer to Gold Builder. Gotcha. It can't be about gotcha. you. Okay. It got to be about them. Got it. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. This is awesome. Michelle? Okay. So just to clarify, because I've definitely had these conversations recently. Um, if you have two single people, so boyfriend and girlfriend, and one, one signs up and the other one's going to sign up under them. If they get married, I mean, and the other one signs up with Planet, the whole deal, Planet Marketing and ITA, when they get married, that cannot be taken from them. Um, I can't say that for sure. When they sign, signed up, as long as they're not married, you, you straight. If down the line and tell it, like if they, end, if they never change their name with IntelliTravel, I don't think, and I mean, with Planet Marketing, Planet Marketing is not going to know. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know that at some point, I want to say it was last year. Planet Marketing must have been going through and they were reaching out to people who had the same addresses and stuff like that and finding out if they were married. And I know someone who got started early on, like even before me, and they had two separate accounts and Planet Marketing was asking them, would you like to join the accounts together? So I don't know what made them kind of go through, you know, the roster to look at. I don't know if they were just cleaning up, seeing if there were, you know, husband and wives that were being signed up separately when they should have been together. And then they were just following up. I don't know. But at the time, if they're not married, absolutely, they can sign up separately. That's legit. Because that question has been coming up. And I thought, you know, and from my, from what I understood is that if they, if it was all done before they got married. Yeah, they're legit. That was done the <laughs> correct way. I'm just saying, I don't know. We can't say if down the line, Planet Marketing doesn't reach out to them and say, hey, I know you're married. Do, they may ask them if they want to join it and it'll probably be up to them at the time, but they did it the right way because they weren't married when they initially got started. <laughs> Yeah, so you should, they should be fine because they, you know, there's no sneakiness going around. They're not married. They can each have their own businesses. Each invest $200. So you should While we're talking about couples, I yeah. have someone who signed up with me back in May. He signed up under his business name. Mm -hmm. And for the life of me, I cannot get him to understand that he and his girlfriend are not ITAs. He keeps insisting that he signed up under his business and that they're both ITAs. Nope, only one person is the ITA. Because you're an independent contractor. So that is a person. The contractor okay. is not, you know, a business. It's right. an independent contractor. So okay. yeah, she would have to purchase her own ITA if she wants to have her own travel agency. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No. All right. I'm going to end this recording.